With me today is Sanjeev Agarwal, who's the president and CEO of Everspin Technology, ticker symbol is M-R-A-N. How do you handle risk and what are some mistakes you see people make with respect to risk management? No risk, no reward. We need to understand the risk going into a situation, have some plans in place, and only then you can actually say, okay, I'm willing to take the risk. How do you handle adversity and what are some obstacles you had to overcome, please? You need to step back, believe in yourself, and then address the issue that is on hand. What makes a great leader? What are some lessons you've learned about leadership that you'd like to share with the audience or anywhere you want to go? It's a good question. I think... And welcome everyone to another Smart Money Circle episode. I'm Adam Sarhan. With me today is Sanjeev Agarwal, who's the president and CEO of Everspin Technology. Ticker symbol is M-R-A-M. Sanjeev, thank you so much for taking the time and welcome to the Smart Money Circle. Thank you, Adam. Good to see you. So I always like to begin, Sanjeev, can you please tell us your story and how you got to where you are today? Sure. Um, My story actually starts uh, somewhere in high school, which is when I actually heard about superconductivity going to school. And I tried to find out about how I could actually learn something about it or be a part of it. And I heard about ceramic engineering. And it turns out that there is one school, at least at that time in India, uh, was the Indian Institute of Technology at Varanasi that actually offered ceramic engineering, a four-year engineering program. So that's where I went. And after graduating, I had the opportunity to actually come and do a PhD in material science at Cornell University. And the idea was I wanted to actually develop materials and understand the oxide materials that actually went into building this uh, uh, superconducting uh, materials. Um, As luck would have it, I didn't quite actually get to work with superconducting materials, but I did get to work on oxide materials, trying to understand their defectivity, trying to understand the transport mechanisms. And that's what I actually used after graduation to set up a reliability uh, program at University of Maryland. So I started working on ferroelectric materials, which is a non-volatile memory, and trying to develop uh, the integration methods to integrate it into CMOS silicon, as well as understand the reliability mechanisms to actually make a product. And my next step was to actually go ahead and join Texas Instruments after that, and which is where we actually commercialized uh, this FRAM or ferroelectric memory. And the reason I bring all of this up is actually, I have actually been working in the non-volatile memory industry for the last 25, 30 years, basically since I graduated uh, from Cornell in material science. And after uh, leaving Texas Instruments, I actually came to the MRAM group or MRAM group in Freescale, uh, which is where we developed this uh, technology uh, as part of Motorola Freescale. And we spun out in 2008 to form Everspin Technologies. So at that time, when I joined Freescale, I was given the opportunity to actually lead the uh, fab uh, operations. And I actually took a year and decided to actually learn all the operations because I wasn't familiar with this technology at that time. So I took a year, understood all the engineering operations before taking on the uh, leadership role of actually leading the uh, fab operations. Since then, uh, I've been able to grow and uh, bring in some uh, uh, perspective on R&D uh, to this technology, uh, went on to become the uh, uh, lead the joint development agreements uh, where we were trying to transfer this technology from our eight inch line in Chandler to 12 inch in global foundries. So there was a, a transition over there. I managed the uh, joint development agreement over there, went on to lead the R&D group uh, for a few years before taking on the position of the chief operating officer and leading the operations for the company uh, for a couple of years. And finally transitioned to the CEO role in 2022. So the idea is I've actually touched almost every department in Everspin, got an experience from all the people. I actually probably know 70 to 80% of the people at Everspin. Uh, Obviously there is some turnover. So some of the new people I know, uh, since I became the CEO, but many of them I know personally, because of all the different roles I've had. So it's been a very colorful journey. It's been a very uh, learning intensive journey, which is what I like. So it's been a, it's been a great uh, uh, 14 odd years at uh, Everspin working on this MRAM technology. I love it. So perfect segue, and it might help educate the audience a li- little bit to give us some background about the technology. Please tell us about your company, your technology, and some of your competitive advantages. Sure, so uh, Everspin, the ticket symbol MRAM, is also what we are all about. It's magnetic random access memory, MRAM. 
and we were fortunate enough to actually be able to get that ticker symbol on NASDAQ. So we are a publicly traded company. Uh, we actually went public in uh, 2016. And what we do is we manufacture non-volatile memories, so persistent memories. So basically you can turn off the power and the memory does not forget what you wrote in it, okay? And the idea is you can actually write to it and read to it very fast on the order of 20 to 35 nanoseconds. So very fast read and writes. And then add to the fact that you can actually uh, um, do that at very extreme temperatures and extreme environments. Automotive temperatures, minus 40 to 125 degrees C. It does not uh, degrade the uh, uh, data retention or the uh, memory that is stored in the device. And then also in harsh environments, you can actually send it to deep space and you would not uh, uh, disrupt the memory. Actually, through our partner uh, FrontGate, we actually have our MRAM on Mars today on the Mars rover actively collecting data. And they were actually also on the way to uh, Jupiter on the Lucy mission with NASA. So very robust technology, uh, very uh, fast read and writes. And what the competitive advantage is, for example, uh, if you're familiar with the technology of NOR flash. Okay? So that basically takes on the order of microseconds to write. Okay, So when you turn on your phone or when you turn on some device, there is some configuration that is actually stored on the device and it is read and that's how your uh, device operates. But once in a while, you need to actually update the configuration on the device. And because it takes microseconds to write, people are actually trying to find ways of actually making it faster. So MRAM is a great solution over there. And we actually have an entire uh, family of products, what we call Persist. It's basically persistent memory for systems. And the idea over there is very fast read writes, uh, uh, robust in extreme temperatures. And then also now we are able to replace flash. And the idea is flash stopped scaling at 40 nanometer CMOS. And also you cannot find monolithic flash beyond 512 megabit, more likely 256 megabit. So if you were looking for a monolithic high density flash, MRAM is the roadmap or the uh, path to actually getting this high density technology for this configuration memory uh, that I was talking about. I'll get off this uh, uh, topic, but just one last thing. Because we can actually uh, turn off the power to our memory, it actually has implications on the edge AI uh, space. The idea is you can store the configuration on our memory. You don't have to keep refreshing it to remember what the configuration is. And you have the memory right next to it to do all the compute. So you can actually compute whatever data is coming through the cameras or through the voice. And you can then decide whether it's an animal, whether it's human or whatever it is right there on the edge. So you don't spend time or power taking that information to the cloud and back. So I think that's where MRAM in the future has a play in edge AI as well. Wow, I love that. So basically what you're able to do is use your technology from multiple industries, from AI all the way to space exploration and Correct. overcome the flash problem where once you turn off the thing, you kind of forget, but you guys remember so that's the non-volatile uh, memory is what you're talking about. Is that a good way of summarizing it? That's correct, except flash is also non-volatile, but there is like SRAM, or static random access memory, or DRAM, dynamic random access memory, that forgets everything when you turn the power off unless you keep refreshing it. So we have MRAM that is actually deployed in each of those applications. We do have a deployment uh, replacing DRAM. That is just the uh, part that we actually ship to IBM. It's a one gigabit uh, spin transfer talk or STT MRAM part that is actually used in their flash core modules. And then we also have parts that are shipping into the SRAM industry. So if you're looking at uh, robotic automation, and the right. idea is if uh, robots, they constantly talk to their computers uh, back in the uh, alcove, and if there is a power event, then the robots need to tell the PLC what they were doing. If they're not able to do it in time, all the whip in the line is actually scrapped. But with our technology, it takes only 20 nanoseconds to write it back. And therefore, it's able to basically prevent any scrap in the line. So it's a great replacement for configuration memory in this automatic ro automation or robotic applications as well. Love it. Makes perfect sense. So let's talk about risk. How do you handle risk? And what are some mistakes you see people make with respect to risk management? No risk, no reward, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, you're right. I mean, I think uh, you do need to be able to manage the risk. I think we need to understand the risk going into a situation, 
have some plans in place and only then you can actually say okay i'm willing to take the risk so that is basically how we approach or how i approach uh, uh the situation the idea is we need to have a complete uh, what we call an fmea right uh, failure modes effects analysis you do that you understand what are the risks what are the things that you're trying to do and you have some backup plans in place or some mitigation in place so once you understand all of that then i mean you have to jump in and actually for example what we're trying to do right now are uh, trying to replace nor flash with mram i mean it's a risky proposition but it's also an obvious proposition so i think uh, understanding the risks and helping our customers understand the risks and uh, uh, benefits of mram actually uh, uh, makes it easier for us got it now makes perfect sense let's talk about timeless lessons sanjeev that you've learned along the way that you'd like to share with the audience i love your story coming from india going all the way to cornell getting the phd going into tech and moving back i mean it's it's fascinating so anything you want to share we'd say please and thank you with the cherry on top sure uh, um i would say uh, my timeless advice would be uh, to be very uh, true to yourself and to believe in yourself and then to surround yourself with friends and family okay i think in terms of need or in terms of uh, adversity right that's when uh, if you have a good friend circle or family circle and i've been very fortunate that way i'm very close to my siblings and i'm actually very close to my uh, family over here in the us as well so i think that's really helped me along the way every time uh, you know things go wrong there is one solid pillar or one solid foundation uh, that you can always go to and that's always uh, worked for me in wow. terms of you know uh, your behavior or your attitude right i think uh, being honest with yourself and being honest with others and treating people as you would like to be treated with respect i think those are the things that uh, you know uh, i try to focus on and uh, has worked for me i love it absolutely love it how about the other side of that timeless mistakes either you've made or you see other people make and how do you avoid them yeah so you know um it's great to do science right and i think science is very important and it's very uh doing r and d to make new products and new innovations is obviously very very useful but one needs to always keep in mind where is that actually going to sell where is the product right if you you can do science for the purpose of science and you do r and d for the purpose of r and d but if there is no customer behind it so what in our business we call the voice of customer i think having the voice of customer and having the customer define where your r and d or where your science is going to lead to i think is very important and sometimes you see that people are trying to build a mercedes when their customer just wants a toyota for example right so i think understanding the needs of the customer and then actually specifically addressing those needs rather than trying to overdo or uh, you know uh, make something that uh is cool but is not really uh, sellable uh, makes it uh, makes it a challenge so i think those are the common mistakes that you see in the industry uh, not listening to the customer the voice of customer in my opinion is very critical love that it makes perfect sense otherwise it's more of a hobby not a business is that correct that's right that's right yeah. and how much can you fund it right i mean eventually right. you're going to run in trouble so yeah Perfect. Let's talk about leadership. As a CEO, you know, what makes a great leader? What are some lessons you've learned about leadership that you'd like to share with the audience or anywhere you want to go? Yeah. It's a good question. I think uh the primary thing about being a leader is respect, right? One needs to be able to uh treat other people the same way that you want to be treated. And then you need to surround yourself with uh with expertise, right? not being worried not worrying about whether it's a uh, somebody that can actually challenge your thought process in fact that is the person that you want on your team people that can actually challenge each other in a friendly environment right uh, i think that's what you want to build and you want to be able to have the ability to empathize with what somebody is going through i think empathy is a strong uh, suit that uh, a leader can develop over time uh, i think to understand what somebody is going through what are the challenges that they are facing and to help them in that scenario i think would be uh, really good so i would say building a strong team uh, respect and i think uh, uh, what i was talking about empathy i think those are the three things that we really need to focus on uh, or at least i focus on as a good leader I love that. And then it goes back to your earlier point about having integrity, being honest, doing the right thing and so on and so forth. That just ties That's together right. perfectly. Yeah. That's right. That's so, right. 
Uh, next question for you. Let's talk about adversity and some obstacles that you had to overcome. How do you handle adversity and what are some obstacles you had to overcome, please? Yeah, so um, one thing that comes to mind is, for example, when I was actually uh, uh, seeking admission at Cornell, right? Um, I was told that uh, we only accept students from Indian Institutes of Technology and not from Banaras Hindu University, which, I, which is where I came from. And the idea over there was, uh, there was a lack of information on the uh, on Cornell side where they didn't understand that uh, whether it was BHU or IITs, they all took the same entrance examination. So we were part of the same group of 2,000 or so students that actually passed that exam to actually get into that ceramic engineering program at BHU or that computer engineering program at IIT Kanpur. So I had to go through that education, right? So instead of getting depressed or uh, backing up, I actually took the effort to actually explain to the uh, admissions committee that it, it's the same group of people. And right. moreover, I was actually strongly interested in the program and that we needed to uh, give me a chance and it actually worked out. So I would say, in, you know, in adversity, you need to actually uh, step back, believe in yourself, and then address the issue that is on hand instead of getting, dep uh, you know, instead of getting uh, depressed or getting, you know, uh, getting low. I think it's a time to actually dig deep and come back with a solution and actually address uh, the problem at hand. So that worked for me. So that's a great way. I love that of, of just taking, looking at the problem instead of avoiding it and then using it uh, to empower you instead of being, exactly. you know, defeated by it. Yeah. And that makes perfect yeah. sense. So final question for you, what is the best piece of advice you'd like to give the audience or your 30 year old self? <laughs> I would say that um, if you believe in something, you need to go after it. I think uh, uh, once again, it comes to believing in yourself and then doing the hard work to actually get to where you want to go. So the example for uh, that I would think about, for example, in, at Everspin was, right? Uh, I had the opportunity to be a leader and actually lead the fab operations. But before actually taking on that position, I prepared myself, right? I decided to actually go and learn all the engineering operations that are there as part of the process so that when I was in that leadership position, then I would uh, uh, understand the challenges that the engineers are facing. So I think believing in yourself, preparing for that end goal that you have, I think those are the two things that I would focus on uh, and give advice to my 30-year-old self. So. I love it. Now it makes perfect sense. Well, Sanjeev, thank you so much for taking the time. Hopefully we'll have you on again soon. This was absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Adam. I really appreciate the opportunity and look forward to talking to you again. Thanks.